Third weekend here at CRCC, we like to celebrate Family Weekend, and because of that, we have a shift representation. If you're new to our church, shift is our student ministry. Can we give a round of applause to Jensen, Rochelle, and Maria, who's with us today, representing shift worship. <laughs> and last but not least, let's give a round of applause to KOR's worship team with us today. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor, our God reigns, and that's why we worship him this morning.
the house of the Lord this morning. Shout amen if you believe that. Church, you may take your seat. We're going to have some video announcements, and we'll be right back. Welcome to tonight's edition of Series to See Nightly News. I'm your host, Hester Lowell. Hello? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Yep. This just in our church needs volunteers to sign up and serve. Family Fun Night brings the whole congregation together to serve the community. If you'd like to volunteer that night, Register online at crccconline.org slash ffn. Scroll to the serve section or fill out an application in the lobby. And we'll be back right after this. Hey Christ the Rock, this is Pastor Brian from CRCC's worship team. Some amazing things are going on and behind me right now I have the worship team with me. <laughs> hey, we just want to let you know that we're holding auditions. Yes, we are. We know that there's talent that's hidden out there. We want to hear it. We want you to be part of what God is doing. So here's what you need to do. If you haven't been part of our Connect class, go ahead and fill out a Connect card and we'll get you connected with that immediately. The second thing, if you have been part of that, is to fill out a, a care team application. You can find that in the lobby or you can find that online. We hope to hear from you soon. God bless you. Bye. 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 That looks like a good time. None of it will be possible without our generous sponsors. If you have a business and would like to sponsor Family Fun Night, visit crcconline.org slash ffn. Congregants can also help by participating in our Giving Initiative weekends. This weekend is our 20 for 20 weekend, so time to hand over your Jacksons. Wait, what's that say? I can't read that. What's that say? Just read it. In other news, dentists recommend consuming one Snickers bar a day for healthier gums. And we'll be back right after this. I'm so excited for Family Fun Night. Guess where I'm serving this year? I don't know. In the food tent with me? Nope, this year I'm handing out candy. I can't wait to... Can I give your girlfriend a kiss? Excuse me? A kiss? We need candy! Here's a kiss. Here's a kiss for you. And here's a kiss for the camera. <laughs> the Family Fun Night is approaching fast and we still need candy. Did you know that it takes 44 bins to reach our goal? If everyone brings a one pound bag, we can definitely reach our target. Please drop off your candy in the lobby. 
And that's it. As always, keep Family Fun Night in your prayers. This has been Serious to See Nightly News with Hester Lowell, signing off. All right, Christ Rock, can you stand with me? All right, so Psalms 34, 7 says, For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. And just please stand with me all today as we worship. So today we all come to church and we all like have our own battles that we're, fight that we're fighting. And just know that you are not alone because God is there. You may believe or think that your bills or your bully at school is bigger than you, but God is way bigger than they ever will be. And this song just talks about how he surrounds us and that he will always be with us wherever and whenever.
protecting us whenever we feel that we are at our lowest, Father God. Whenever we have done wrong, whenever others have done wrong to us, Father God, you are always there to just confide in us, Father God. And let us know that we are not alone, that we will not fight our battles by ourselves because you are there with us. You have equipped us, Father God, to face every enemy that has came before us, Father God, and every enemy that will come before us, God. And we just thank you for your love and your mercy. In your precious and humble name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. This is the day the Lord hath made. Would you greet someone and welcome them to the house of the Lord before you're seated in his presence? It may look. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Well, this is the day the Lord hath made. Let's rejoice and be glad in. Are you glad in the house of the Lord? Would you join me in giving our Lord a hand clap of praise? Can we thank God for these generations on this stage? Incredible job. Can we thank God for Shift and for KOR that's on the stage with our adult ministry? We thank God for what the Lord is doing here. It is marvelous in his eyes. If you're a first time visitor here, we welcome you to Christ the Rock Community Church. Glad you came by. Hope you come back and see us again. Fill out that connect card and we will gladly send you some information about our local assembly here at Christ the Rock Community Church. And for those who are watching on Facebook Live, welcome to Christ the Rock Community Church. So glad you tune in and pray that you're going to be blessed and pray that you understand you need to be a part of a local church in where your area amen church okay so uh, we're excited about family fun night are you excited about family fun night it is right around the corner and this and this is so it's, it, we're going to have a, uh, a meeting after our last service of all our volunteers so if you sign up you know you have to be here a little later on but we're excited about what the lord is doing i want you to know what family fun night has become in 2006 uh, december 1st i came to christ the rock community church and i was associate pastor when i became the senior pastor in 2008 i felt led of god to take family fun night and to transform it from a carnival where people would come and not hear the gospel and transform it into a place where people will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. I realized that we were expending so much energy, so many resources, so much money all this time, and we were not talking about Jesus. And so since then, we have made this an environment where Jesus is praised, Jesus is lifted up, where we have a prayer tent, where people actually hear the gospel. It's okay to have clowns at the church. We understand clowns are necessary at the church. Amen, church. But, but we, we like that. That's fine. But we also want people to know that when they come here, we have the good news. And the good news is Jesus Christ. Christ has died for your sins. Amen, church? And that you have Jesus, you have a Savior. And, that, and so we, we have transformed Family Fun Night. And for those of you who don't understand what Family Fun Night is all about, watch this video and be reminded why we do what we do. Watch this. There is one day that is set apart for darkness. One day that reverences death, fear, and sin above all else. One day where terror is celebrated over happiness. 
This day is none other than October 31st. On this day, Christ the Rock Community Church refuses to go into the darkness. We refuse to celebrate death, fear, and sin. We refuse the enemy and all his false promises. We refuse to stay quiet. Christ the Rock Community Church takes action on this day meant for darkness. We join together as the body of Christ to do battle against the schemes of evil. On this day, we stand in the gap for the lost. We call out for his lost sheep. On this day, we welcome our brothers and sisters into his presence. We worship the one and only Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Everyone will praise his great and majestic name. Holy is he. We claim this day for the Lord because it is his and his alone. Serve at FFM 2019 to reclaim his people back from the Prince of Lies, the Great Deceiver, the Servant. On this day, fight for his son, fight for his daughter, fight for his children. On this day of darkness, serve. Serve for your community. Serve for your family. Serve for the body. Pray, speak, and serve with boldness on this day, because this day has already been won. That's incredible. I want to thank Jonathan Sanchez for putting that together. That's an incredible video. That re that's a reminder. We're ready to go out there right now, right? Okay, but no, easy, 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 easy. First things first. On Wednesday night, church, say Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we're going to be here in the main sanctuary, and we're going to have prayer because before any battle is fought, it must be preceded by praise and worship. And so on Wednesday night, we're going to gather in the main sanctuary here, and we're going to pray. We're going to thank God in advance for what he's going to do on October 31st. So please come by, especially if you're serving. Please come by because we want us all to be anointed and emboldened, and, and, and strengthened to do what God has called us to do on October 31st. So make sure on this Wednesday night you come and be a part of it. Also, remember, Israel Trip is coming up. More information on the website. Of course, we're still looking for a dynamic volunteer coordinator. We're gathering all of the resumes and all those who are interested, and then we'll have a day where you'll be you will, you will be reached out to and come and be a like a a big big interview process so if you're interested please give us your information and then finally let's pray for the stephanie santiago family uh, her mother passed 48 years old and so uh, we will let you know about those arrangements so that we can we can give her comfort as she's in this valley uh, of a season of sorrow right now so let's pray together father we lift up uh, stephanie santiago to you lord today lord help this dear daughter and she's making arrangements uh, to, to lay her mother to rest. Lord, we as a church, we, we mourn with those who are mourning that they might be comforted. Bread of heaven, we pray that you would speak to her, that you would give comfort as only you can. Now, Lord, we turn our face towards your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, is a light unto our path, Lord, today. Father, pray today that all of us would leave changed by the power of your word, speaker included. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Lord, may no flesh get glory in the presence of our God. May Jesus be lifted and exalted only. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church say amen. So are all religions the same? What makes us different? Many in the world would make us believe that all religions are the same because there are so many similarities to most religions. Most religions believe in a higher power. Most religions would, include, would encourage people to be kind, to be loving, thoughtful to one another. Most religions believe in some kind of afterlife. So what makes Christianity different? As a matter of fact, some would say because there's so many similarities that we should focus on what makes us similar as opposed to what makes us different. And I would, so I would tell you this from the very outset. It's the difference. The difference makes a difference. <laughs> what makes us different? 
There's nothing, there's something, I should say, there's something unique about Christianity. And the main distinction between the world religions and Christianity is all the man-made religions trust in good works for eternal life. It was the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and said, what good thing must I do that I may inherit eternal life in Mark chapter 10? And Jesus began to talk about the commandments. He says, I've done all of those things. And then one translation will say, Jesus looked at him, he loved him, and he says, you lack one thing, go sell what you have, give to the poor, and follow me. It seems like there were multiple steps there, but the, the key to it is not what must I do, what must I be to inherit eternal life? I must be a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. I want you to turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 6. And in Luke chapter 6, we're happening upon an incident. It's, uh, it's Luke's uh, understanding of the Sermon on the Mount. And I want you to know what's different in Luke and Matthew. It's like this. If some of you are taking notes. And after this service, if you compare notes, you, you'll walk away with different things that impacted you. And so Matthew writes about this sermon and Luke writes about this sermon. But, but Luke give us, gives us a different insight that I'd like to talk about today about the difference being a Christian makes, and how we are to be distinctively different because of our Savior. I want to commence reading in Luke chapter 6 and verse number 20, and he lifted up, Jesus lifted up his eyes towards his disciples. He said, blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. And Jesus is focusing his disciples not only right now, but on the hereafter. Let's go back to it. For indeed your reward is great where in heaven. Look at verse number 24. But woe to you who are rich, for you've received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you shall hunger. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Jesus is juxtapositioning both of these kinds of lives. A life that says in the sweet and by and by there is a reward. Or a life that says I want my reward in this life in the world right now. Jesus goes on further to explain the difference of being a follower of Jesus, what it looks like in verse number 27, but I say to you who hear, who are listening. Let me pause right here. You know all of us are in this room right now, but some of us are not listening right now. You know that, right? Just because you're in a place doesn't mean that you're listening. You ever been talking to somebody and say, are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, I got a witness on the front row, okay, yes. Because you could actually be somewhere and not listen. So Jesus is saying, I want you to perk your ears, hear what I'm saying. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. Some translations will say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Verse number 32. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that for you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be, church say will be, will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. Now, now you know why we're talking about this. Because Jesus says that when you do this, you will be sons, including daughters, of the Most High, El Elyon, the God of all gods, the great God. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Let's pause there. We see first that there is an attitude required to be like the Most High God. 
Jesus says in verse number 27, but I say to you who hear, I want you to love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. I want you to bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. Jesus is telling us that in this world, as a disciple of Jesus, as a follower of Jesus, you're going to have opposition. It's going to be personal, that you're going to have what's called enemies. And the worst thing to have is a frenemy. That's the worst thing in the world, okay? But, but Jesus says, now, you're going to have this. And it's not because of your insensitive behavior. It's not because of your arrogance, but just because you're going against the grain of the world. Just because you have the audacity to say that the God that you serve is greater than any other God. Just because you have the audacity to believe that your salvation is not found in your works, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Because of that, Jesus says, you're going to have enemies. Our lives, our faith will convict sinners and they would try to bring us down to justify what they believe. But Jesus says, I don't want you to be like them. I don't want you to retaliate. I want you to be different. I want you to have a different kind of attitude. And Jesus says, I want you to understand that, 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 that there are four things I want you to do. I want you to love your enemies. That makes you different. I want you to do good to those who hate you. That makes you different. I want you to even bless those who curse you. That makes you different. And I want you to pray for those who mistreat you. See, brothers and sisters, what, what, what Jesus is calling us to do in these, moment, in these moments is I want you to be different. It requires an attitude, a different kind of attitude. In other words, we must look through them to see him. Look through what you're going through and see him in the process. You, you know, uh, Jesus is, is, is teaching us something because he, he doesn't want us to be natural. And let me talk about something that I think all of us can share that's natural to us. Have you ever noticed how naturally aggressive we are when we, when we drive? Anybody going to admit to this today? <laughs> that, that when we're driving, sometimes our attitude is not the attitude of the most high? That there's some of us in this room, you will miss your exit to get somebody back? <laughs> and you feel that somehow if you cut me off, it's personal. You're doing something to me personally. And if you cut me off personally, then it's my right to cut you off because I want you to know you cannot treat me that kind of way. Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. I want your attitude to be different. In other words, I want you to be so different. Verse number 29, he says, to him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you've got to be willing to let it go. Have you done this? You've done it on the road. Someone cut you off and you say, you know what? I've got things to do. I don't have time to respond to your foolishness. I have a job. Amen, church, right? Yeah. You let it go. And this is what Jesus is saying. In this world, you're going to have opposition. You're going to have enemies. You're going to have opposition, people who hate you for no reason at all. It is amazing to me. And what I realize is I've been talking to pastors, and we all agree that opposition comes with the job. There will be people that don't like you, not based on the experience with you, but on somebody else's experience. And you've got to be able to let that go. In this, brothers and sisters, I, I can tell you, I can testify that, that in 2006, I came here, Tara and I in 2006 in December, and been faithful to the church that brought us here, and been serving in this local area that God has brought us to. And there's great, great opposition, but I can tell you this, God is faithful. God is faithful because Jesus says, I will build my church. And Jesus is building his church. So Jesus, what are you doing to us? Are you putting us in a weakened position? Give to everyone who asks. And from him who takes away, do not ask it back. What are you doing, Jesus? Jesus is not taking away your power, but he's empowering you on how to respond. He's telling you how to respond to the evils that come. Love, do good, bless them, pray for them. And then Jesus says this, at verse number 31, and just as you want men to do to you, do also to them. Okay, preacher, that's what makes us different. No, no, no. Most religions believe that if you give off positive energy, positive energy is coming back to you. Most religions encourage you to do good things so that good things can come your way. That does not make us different. Well, what, what makes us different? First of all, an attitude. Secondly, our actions. Our actions must be different. 
you know, back to the car analogy. Have you noticed that, and, and you can admit it, you're in the house of the Lord. If someone does not let you merge, and they all down, on down the road need you, for you to let them merge, you have to make a decision, don't you? And oftentimes, I don't see you because you didn't let me merge, I don't see you. Right? Mm -hmm. Because my actions are going to let you know. You didn't let me merge, and I'm not going to let you merge either. Okay? Brothers and sisters, look, look what Jesus says to us in verse number 32 and following. He says, that, and love those who love you. If you love those who love you, what makes you different than a sinner? If you do good to those who do good for you, what makes you different than a sinner? If you lend to those from whom you might receive back credit, what makes you different than sinners? Not only should we let it go, but Jesus is saying to us, we need to let it show. <laughs> let it show that you're different. Because, brothers and sisters, because we follow this infinite God, then we have this infinite understanding that God is on our side. In Romans chapter 12, he says this, Do not pay, uh, repay evil for evil, but be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Leave that scripture there. Paul says, if it's possible, which means sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes people may not be at peace with you, but here is the next part. But you must be at peace with them. As possible, it lies within your power, within your mind, within your thoughts to be at peace with everyone. Not just some people, but with everyone. Verse 19, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath for it is written. It is mine to avenge. I will repay says the Lord. That should bring comfort to you. Listen, God says, don't you worry. I, I, this, this, is, this is something I wonder. I, I, I'm not sure that we understand that God has a computer. He knows what we post on the internet. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> there, there may not be internet in the Bible, but God understands the internet. And sometimes we get cyber courage. Amen, church. And you, you have to understand, because you want to be different, what you post should be different than the world. Amen, church. This is what he's saying. Because you're projecting something. You're projecting something. Jesus says, verse number 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heat burning coals on his head. Yes, preacher. You mean if I'm kind to somebody, God's going to set their hair on fire? That's not what he's saying. <laughs> but in that day, burning coals were a commodity. It was something used. Fire wasn't readily available, and so they would carry coals from one place to place. And if they had to, to be a camp out overnight, they would use these coals to start a fire. And what Paul is saying to us is when you're kind, when you don't return evil for evil, you give someone something to think about later on. It becomes useful later on. Paul says, then your kindness will bear fruit. Verse number 21, do not be overcome by evil. But overcome evil with what, church? Good. Let me tell you something. And I, it's, it's, this is something that, that I, 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 we see this. You see this in our world. Evil can overcome. Evil can overcome your thoughts. But the only way to overcome evil is by doing what is good. The quality of our faith is found in how we treat one another. The quality, the understanding of our faith is found and how we treat one another. Jesus says this, you love your enemies, you do good to them because it makes you different. It shows that because we understand something, and I want us to hear this, because what Jesus has said earlier, that you have to make a decision. Either you get your reward now, or you reign later. Either you get comfort, you, I got you back, I responded to your evil. Either you get satisfaction now, or you get joy later on. I found that when we get satisfaction in this world, it is temporary to the next fight. Amen, church. But if you don't focus on right now and you look forward to, to the things of God, you'll find that God is faithful. Would you just remind your neighbor, God is faithful. Go ahead and tell them God is faithful. <laughs> yes, he is faithful. The most high God is kind. And look what he says to us in verse number 35. If, but love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be. Your reward shall be. It may not be right now, but it shall be. You may not see it right now, but it will be. 
God will avenge. God will repay every evil on this side of the earth, brothers and sisters. It will be great and you will be the sons of the Most High. What a transformation. Going from the enemy of God to now being called the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. What a transformation. And all of this happens because of your knowledge and your awareness and your faith and your trust in God, El Elyon, the God of all gods. But here's the problem. We live in a world where people are, are, we are, we are obsessed with people's opinions about us. And we're afraid that if, that if we don't defend ourselves, we don't avenge ourselves, that if we don't properly uh, uh, pr uh, project our case before people, that somehow it's going to matter in the grand scheme of things. So you don't have to respond to certain things because you know who you are. You know who you are. Stephen Cole says it this way. Jesus sums up his directives in his verse. When he says that you shall be sons of the Most High, he does not mean that you become a child of God by doing love and deeds, but rather that you prove or show it in that way. We bear his likeness just as our physical children bear a resemblance to us as parents. God shows his kindness to ungrateful and evil people by giving them life, health, food, clothing, and many other blessings. And most of these people never express their gratitude to God. Listen, as a child of God, you should be thankful to God. Amen, church. Every day is a blessing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that all things will ultimately work together for good to those who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purposes. Yet Jesus keeps on giving to them. And when we show God's radical love by being kind to those who mistreat us, by treating others as we wish to be treated, by giving when there's nothing in it for us, sometimes those in the world will take notice and they'll ask the question, why are you different? And that gives us an opportunity to express to them the love of Jesus Christ. It requires an attitude and it requires an action. Now, I, I want to I want to talk to you about most high moments, because what Jesus is telling us today in that text, many of us, you can't live that out every day. I would love for us to be able to say, you know what, preacher, every time I do something, I'm doing it to somebody as, wish I, as if I wanted to be treated. But that's not necessarily so. And every time, every now and then, we will have what I call a most high moment where you set yourself aside, where you set your anger aside, where you set your rage aside and you think about the other person. Today, I want to show, show you a most high moment. In September 6, 2018, Officer Amber Geiger entered into the wrong apartment, and she thought it was hers. It's a national story. She came into the apartment, and there was a 26-year-old by the name of Botham Jean. He was sitting on his sofa eating ice cream, watching TV. And she accidentally, but, 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 but accidentally, it was not her point to go in there, and nothing supports anything other than that. And if you have another opinion, keep it to yourself, okay? I, I don't, don't, don't email me on this. Don't miss the point. Here's the point. He was killed, and she did it, and it was guilty. He wasn't, def she wasn't defending, it, it, it was guilty, and she was found guilty. In the moments after she was sentenced as a murderer, there were protesters outside chanting, no justice, no peace. At that very moment, his young brother took the stand to make a statement. And some of you may have seen edited portions of this statement, but I want you to show, I want to show you the unedited portion of the statement that was made to this young lady who was guilty. Watch this. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not going to say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see I I personally want the best for you. 
and I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not going to say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can can I give her a hug, please? Please. Yes. That, that is a most high moment. She didn't ask for forgiveness. It was given to her. She deserved punishment. She deserved wrath, but instead was given a hug. And note how uncomfortable the young boy was. Did you see him pulling his collar and everything? It, it, It wasn't easy, but it was out of obedience to extend mercy. The Bible says this, but love your enemies and do good and lend not hoping for nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for he's kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful just as your father also is merciful. I'm gonna invite you to, to a Most High moment. A moment where you will obey scripture. The Bible says, judge not that you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together. Running over shall men give to you. And Jesus says this, for the measure that you give out is the same that will be returned to you. I want you to get your your connect card. If you have a bulletin, inside of your bulletin is your connect card. And we're gonna do an exercise here. I know there's some people here that think that these connect cards are used to write things on them and you'd be surprised at some of the things people write. (laughs) But today we wanna use these cards as a release, as as a most high moment. This is what I want you to write on this card. And and what I want you to do when this card, when this service is over in the offering receptacles, I want you to put this card because whatever is put inside of those offering receptacles is given to God. That's why you must be careful what you write on these cards. Because they're being offered to God. Can you imagine that? So so today I want you to write on the back of this card and, and you know who you are here today. You need to forgive, not because they earn it, not because they deserve it, not because they ask for it, but your Lord commands you to forgive. We're preacher, hold it a minute. (laughs) I'm not there yet. 
The question is this, when will you get there? Today is a good day. You have heard the gospel. You have seen a most high moment. Brothers and sisters, now is your moment. On the back of this card, I want you to put Lord, because first of all, it's out of obedience. I, because it's personal, forgive, because that's your action. Now put a name there. Lord, out of obedience, I, the offended, forgive. You write that name there. And when service is over, I want you to offer it to God. I want you to put it in an offering receptacle. Lord, I'm going to give this to you. Father, today, this is a most high moment. Today, Lord, I know there are people here wrestling. There are people here today, Lord, that have a list of people that they want to write on this card. Lord, today, in this most high moment, we want to be sons and daughters. Lord, today I pray that you will find us to be obedient. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Move in this place. Set us free, Lord Jesus. Some of us are so bound to what happened yesterday until we're not living today. Today, Lord, we want to be set free of that offense. And Lord, today, we bless the offender. We pray for them. And we make a, we make a choice today that we would rather reign later than get a reward now for your glory. Jesus' name I pray. Let the church say amen. I want you to sit there a minute. And I want you to write, Lord, I forgive. And write that name on that card. Make this the most high moment to be obedient. I give myself away. I give myself away. Give my need to be right. I give myself away. So Lord, I surrender. I give myself away. Yes, Lord. I give myself away. Lord, I surrender. I give myself away. this right now as you've written that name on that card why don't you just put your hand on that card and say Lord bless you know the person now preacher I want I want revenge no 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 you may be weeping right now but God has promised that you're going to laugh later <laughs> Lord bless this person lead them to the understanding of what they did hurt me to the core Lord, today I'm not returning evil for evil. I'm giving good. I'm not going to be overcome by evil, but I'm going to overcome evil by doing what's good. When the service is over, you put this in the offer receptacle, and I want you to walk away from this. Leave this to God. Be set free from it. Brothers, I want you to come help serve the body of Christ as we transition now into observing Holy Communion together.
saying with me? Let's take it up. Let's say he's king forever. Come on, let's say it. He's king forever. He's king forever. He's king forever. King forever. He's king forever. King forever. Come on, let's declare it. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I Paul says that when you come to this moment, remember what you have in your hand. This is a reminder of the cost of your salvation. It is because of the body of Christ that was given for you and the blood of Christ that was shed for us. We have access to the Father. We're no longer condemned, but we call the beloved. Paul says when you get to this moment, stop and search your heart. Would you pause, bow your head before a holy God? God, search me. Know me. Forgive me. Of attitude and action does not that did not demonstrate that I'm a son or a daughter of the Most High God. Father, today we look for more Most High moments in our lives where we can decrease even our righteous anger for your glory. Father, I pray today that we would not be concerned about the rewards of today, but we would long for the, for the great gift that's ours in Jesus Christ to come. Now, Lord, be with us now as we remember your precious sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray and the church says amen. Jesus says take bread and break it and remember my body was given for you. Let's eat and remember the body of Christ. The beauty of being a disciple of Jesus Christ is to remember that Jesus paid it all. And this is what the juice reminds us that the blood of Jesus paid it all for us. Let's drink and remember and celebrate Jesus. And now church, will you say it with me, Maranatha? Maranatha. Come on, say it real loud. Maranatha. Maranatha. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Would you look at your neighbor to your left and right, tell him Jesus is coming again. Go ahead and remind him. Oh, yes, he is. Jesus is coming real, real soon. And if hearing that announcement caused any kind of fear in your heart today, you need to know Jesus and be at peace with God and long for his coming. At the conclusion of this service, our prayer counselors will be down front. We want to talk to you about your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you hear you wandered from the Lord and the Lord says, come back to him today. Or thirdly, maybe you're here, you want to connect with this local assembly. We would be glad to have your part of the body of Christ expressed through Christ the Rock Community Church. Let's talk about membership. Grab the hand of the person next to you. Look him in the face and tell him, most high moment, most high moment. Yeah. Most high moment. Look for most high moments. Father, today as we prepare to leave this place, we thank you. Lord, some of us are going to drop a name in the offering receptacle that we've been carrying this burden for years. Lord, I pray for supernatural release. That we would walk out with a buoyancy, with a freedom, with a joy to know that Jesus is ours, the great El Elyon, the God of all gods. And in obedience to the Most High God, we give this away to you. Lord, I thank you today for those who support the work of ministry by recognizing you as Lord of their finances and giving liberally towards the work at Christ the Rock Community Church. Lord, would you bless the seed and bless the sower. And I pray that out of his glorious riches, he strengthened us with power through his spirit in our inner beings so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. 
I pray we've been rooted, grounded in his love, may our power together with all God's people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep the love of Christ is for us. And to know this love that surpasses the ability to comprehend that we might be filled to the fullness of the measure of God in our lives. And now to our great God, he's still able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine to our God be all the glory, the majesty, the dominion and power forever and ever we pray. And those who love Jesus said, amen. God bless you.